coming up. David Dooley. Of breaking into her office when she came up the steps and surprised him. A break-in? What was he after? That feels like a thin motive. Sometimes, desperate people do desperate things. When Dateline continues. Hey everyone, it's Tremaine Lee, MSNBC correspondent and host of the new podcast, Into America. In our latest episode, we go to Nashville, Seattle, and all over the internet to see just how creative some people are getting to keep the music going. What happens when gigs are canceled, clubs are closed, and school concerts are called off? When people listen to music, they're feeling the emotions and the closeness of somebody else, even if they can't be in the same space as them. Coronavirus is keeping us home, but as you'll hear, we can't stop the music. The importance of music is to keep our spirits up. We're in this situation, and in my opinion, may as well. Michelle Mockby's favorite color had always been red. Since her death, her Thanks. family has worn red in her honor. And that's what they did in October. They flowed into this Kentucky courthouse for David Dooley's trial. On May the 29th of 2012, Dan Mockby lost the, the love of his life. And two little girls lost their mom. At the hands of a man he couldn't even keep his story straight from one day to the next. Prosecutor Linda Tally oh, there it goes again. You see that? Oh, well, no, it wasn't on, was no it? It is on. DNA. So she told oh, there it goes. So, what's the problem that you're telling about? The glitch. Got it. Glitch. glitch. It was through this process that the path kept coming yep. back to one person. See that dash? Yep, now it's more often. Huh? Well, it's sure, often, sure, aren't you? All the employees working on the morning off. of the murder. Off right all now. Yeah. Upstairs office area where Michelle was killed. They I think it might be have a computer problem with that. I'm not create, sure. Uh, yeah, that's time just really of I don't know if we can fix that. Yeah, my dad tell me there's a loose wire somewhere. The red pickup truck. The jury but you know, mommy, it's a glitch. Check engine no check engine light. You see that lights? No lights. So, so that's good. That's good, right? The prosecutor showed the jury a photo of the It's a good question, mommy. It's a good, good question, mommy. It's a good question. A glitch. Our belief it's a very good question. That David Dooley was Makes in the me happy. Breaking into her office when she came up the steps yep. and surprised him, and ultimately she was assaulted and restrained. Because she was Hopefully, this will go to a glitch here. Something. Medical examiner said Michelle. Yeah, my dad told me like there's a loose wire or something. So then after such a mommy, it's a good question. No My dad got a good question for me too to to what the yeah, issue is or what causes it. Found at the scene a match to his. Yeah. The prosecutor argued the janitor worked every yep, day. Yeah, here's the radio and here's the AC controls. Together perfectly. Yeah. Listen to a podcast, right? Yeah. Means we on Bluetooth. Hey. Yes. We need to talk about you doing some schoolwork. Yeah. Some eye ready? Mm-hmm, yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. Miss, and Miss Leslie sent you a packet home? Yeah. And part of it is about hygiene? Do you know what hygiene is? Hmm, man, I don't know what that is. Hygiene is keeping your hair clean. It's very hard for a person to explain how they can't taking baths and showers. Okay. And wearing my deodorant. deodorant, right? And brushing your teeth. Yeah. And washing your hands, which you're super good at. Yeah. Right? I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. So right. that's what hygiene is. And hygiene is very important when you get a job. You know, like when you go to work at the school. Yeah. When you go to work at Chuck E. Cheese. Or when you go to work at various places. Yeah. You are going to have to practice good hygiene. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Shaving is part of good hygiene. Yeah. Chris Roach and Tom Pugh got their turn. They talked about all the hard evidence the state didn't have. DNA evidence, murder weapon, blood evidence, marks on David Dooley. Dooley never testified in front of the jury. 
but he did talk to Dateline about the case against him and his story that differed from his wife's. You say you went home to check on your wife. They talked to your wife and she says he came home because he tore his pants and he came home to change his pants. So what's the truth and why can't you and your wife agree on the same story? We do agree that I came home. Did you go home to change your pants? No, I did not. Why would your wife say that you did? I do not know. We've talked about that a couple of times. The only thing we can come up with is she didn't hear me properly. Janet Dooley has serious hearing problems. And on the day of the murder, she says she only saw a pair of ripped pants in the house and thought David said that's why he came home. So a person that cannot hear, they put things together themselves through their eyes. And I did. Dave didn't change his clothes and Dave didn't change his story. The defense also stressed that DNA was found on Michelle's body and belongings in at least five different places. And none of that was a conclusive match to David Dooley or anyone else. We heard testimony that there were many unknown DNA profiles. Could one of these unknown profiles have been the killer? The defense noted that something had set off the warehouse alarm system just three days before the murder. And you think that's significant? Yeah. Yeah, it's significant. That means that someone could have gained access to Thermo Fisher. After both sides had presented their cases, it was time for closing arguments. No one could think of any reason to kill Michelle Mockney. So what motive would David Dooley have to kill Michelle Mockney? But it was only after the defense had wrapped up its closing that the prosecutor gave her answer to that question, laying out her theory of motive for the first time. I would suggest to you that the evidence is right in that stack of stuff over there. Time cards. You have invoices. All kept in Michelle's office. You think the motive was the time cards? Yes. I believe that Michelle had actually discovered the fact that he had actually been triple dipping by clocking himself in, clocking his wife in, and getting paid hourly to do a job that they were already being paid a monthly salary to do. That feels like a thin motive. Sometimes desperate people do desperate things. Was David Dooley desperate enough to commit the murder over falsified time cards? It would be up to the jury to decide. Coming up. We the jury. A verdict from the jury. But the real stunner was what came after. So I don't get a chance to explain it? You're not patrolling this anymore. A prosecutor turned witness and a case turned upside down. They lie, they cheat, and that's what they do. After waiting a full day without hearing a verdict, Michelle Mockby's siblings were on pins and needles. When the first day comes and goes, and there's no verdict, you guys worry at all? Yeah. 